Watch you guys, got another video here for you. Now it's happened to us all one time or another when we've built a PC and we get no post. What that means is when you power it on, you don't get a post screen on your display here. And basically uh, this is not classed as a, a not booting uh, system because boot not booting would be when you get the Windows logo coming up and spinning around and then it goes off. That's a not booting uh, problem. Uh, this is no post, which is probably the worst because it means either um, a cable's not plugged in correctly or something's not right, or you've got a bad piece of hardware. And that's what we're going to go through in this video. Now, normally what happens is when you're uh, getting a no post issue, which is your power on self test, basically what happens, the bias will determine whether the video card or onboard graphics uh, is working correctly it will move through the next process where it verifies your RAM and then it will move on and check your keyboard and mouse whether that's plugged in correctly and then normally what happens is it looks for your PCI um, bus and then starts checking all of the cards that are installed and so on and then it will go on to the display and then you get the display it happens very quickly uh, but that's generally basically roughly what happens when you get the uh, power on self test so what we're going to do here is take a look at how we can resolve the problem. So there's going to be two scenarios. Uh, one, you've got an old system, which is going to be slightly different to a brand new system. Now, I got an email from a gentleman who is a subscriber of my channel. He basically said that he's built himself a brand new PC and he's not getting any post, which is any uh, post uh, displaying on there. Now, I'm going to go through some of the things that you should try. Now, some of these are very, very simple and very basic, but you have to go through these to eliminate, to make sure that it's not, uh, that is the problem. So let's go ahead and start with some of the basics here first and uh, clarify whether it's a, a, just a general cable issue or whether it's uh, some sort of problem. So let me move this around and then we can work out here. So I'm going to try and get around the back here, as you can see. The first thing to do is check the power switch on the power supply and make sure that is on. You also want to make sure the power lead, which goes into the power supply, is turned on at the wall outlet. And also what you want to do is make sure this, this cable is good and known working. If it's bad, then you need to replace it. You can check it. I've made videos to show you how to do that, but that's the first place to check. Next. Um, if there's a little light on here on the power supply, you might see a light power on. That doesn't necessarily mean that the power supply is not bad, but basically we'll just move on to the next step. So make sure you've got your, all your cables plugged in correctly. Make sure there's no damaged cable or bent pins or anything like that. Check those and make sure. Unplug anything that's plugged into the back of the computer apart from uh, the mouse and keyboard. Uh, otherwise you're going to get an error, but basically just unplug any external drives, any hubs, any sort of uh, flash drives or anything like that, unplug them and take them out. Once we've done that, we can then move on to the inside of uh, the unit. Now what you want to do here is inside here, if you've just built your PC, you want to make sure when you're building PCs, you want to test this outside of the PC before you build it. So many times you've probably uh, built a PC over the years and you haven't tested it, you've done, I've done it myself where I thought it'd be okay and guess what, it's not okay and it doesn't work and you've just done all the cable management, it's really really bad practice. What you want to do first is test this on the motherboard box to make sure you're getting BIOS and everything else is working okay. If you don't do that and you go ahead and do a complete build, which I see a lot of people doing, uh, because they can't be bothered to test it, it's just too much uh, work for them apparently. But if you do that, what's going to happen is it's going to save you a lot of this headache. Because if you've done all the cable management and it's not posting, you're going to end up having to take it all apart. What I would suggest you do is take it all apart and put it back onto a motherboard box to make sure you're not grounding out the back of the case and making sure that you've uh, done it correctly. Next up, if you don't want to do that and you want to test, make sure your cables are plugged in, your CPU cable, make sure that is plugged in all the way. Make, if it's not plugged in, you need to plug it in as it's not going to work. Your 24 pin power cable from your power supply here. Make sure if you're using a modular power supply, make sure they're plugged in, in the, uh, all the way at the power supply and make sure they're plugged in at the motherboard. So check both of these places, okay? Get down the back of the 
uh, power supply, make sure you've pushed it in all the way and make sure the clip is clipped over. Same thing here, make sure it's seated all the way down. Uh, if it's not seated all the way down, it's not gonna work. One little teeny bit out and it can cause havoc uh, with the system. Once you've done that, you can move on to the next step which is the front panel connectors, which is for the case, which powers the, when you push the power button up here, let me just show you up here. When you push the power button, there's a cable that runs down here and you plug them into the board. So basically what you wanna do is make sure all the front panel connectors are connected up the right way. You can check your user manual and uh, check to make sure. Now you might be saying to yourself, oh, that's done all right, I know how to do that. Unplug them and reseat them and make sure they're correct. That way you're not going to forget to check this and of course it's not going to work properly. Check the motherboard to see whether there's any uh, power light on. Some of the more expensive boards will have a little power LED light on there. If you're getting power, that means you're getting power to the board. Also check to see if there's any diagnostic buttons or anything like that or LED diagnostic panel on there. Some of the more expensive boards have those. These budget boards won't have that, uh, but you can check, okay? And once you've checked all your cables, next thing you want to do is check your heatsink. And yes, I did turn this around the right way. Some people were getting triggered because it was here. I said I would do it, but it's just basically the outer shroud that you have to unscrew and twist around, which I said in the video, which I'll do, and I've done, so now it's okay. Hope them guys can sleep well at night knowing I've done that. But other than that, you want to check the power, uh, the heatsink here. Make sure this is seated correctly. You might want to take it off and uh, check to make sure that you haven't left the plastic bit on the bottom of the CPU uh, heatsink and then uh, put it back on because sometimes that can cause problems. I've seen people do it online. It's not very good. And uh, they've been in the business 20 plus years, as they say. But you want to check that. Make sure that you check that. And uh, also, if it's okay, put some fresh compound on, clean the old one off, put some fresh compound on and reseat that down, okay? And make sure it's nice and firm on there. Once we've done that, you can then start to um, get to the power switch. Make sure the power switch on here is working, okay? So if you've got power on the board, you can see a power light on the board and you're pushing this and nothing's happening, you can jump the jumper down here to make sure that it's working. There's a little uh, power switch cable here and uh, you can basically uh, just jump at those with a screwdriver and it should power on if it doesn't power on then it's not your switch and uh, you've got some other deeper issues there so next up we're going to move on to what it could be uh, with uh, hardware so once you've checked all of this stuff you're now getting into the meat and potatoes which is pretty much hardware and this is where you've got probably a doa item on uh, been delivered to you now don't get your knickers in a twist basically this is pretty normal they make so much of this hardware and sometimes you just get a doa okay and it could be a bad board uh, there i've had bad boards on every single motherboard manufacturer there's no one board that stands out from the rest so just remember just to rma it if it's a bad board now if you've got hardware around if you're a pc repair tech and you've got hardware and you can swap it out then obviously it's really quick and easy to swap out. So if you've got an Intel system with onboard graphics, you can whip out the graphics card and turn on the onboard graphics and plug it into the onboard graphics on the back here and see whether it fires up. If it fires up, then you've got a bad graphics card. Uh, same thing with your RAM. You need to check your RAM. If you've got four sticks or two sticks or one stick and you haven't got nothing to test, obviously if you've only got one stick of RAM, it could be a bad stick and you're not going to know until you switch that out. What you could do is take it all out and power it on and see if you get a beeping code or any sort of noises and it fat fires up. Because sometimes you're going to get the PC firing up and then turning off. Sometimes you get the fan spinning and nothing happens. Uh, there's a bunch of different scenarios that happens with these. Uh, as long as we're not talking about video problems, like a video issue or Windows booting issue. If you're talking about post screen, not displaying and not coming on, uh, make sure that your monitor is basically working. That means the PC is booting up and you can't see it. So you need to determine whether it is that is the problem and then move on. So you can test these. So basically these will come out, these uh, sticks, obviously if you built these uh, PCs, you can uh, remove this stick. I would advise you to remove at least 
leave one in and then power it on, see if it happens. If you've only got one stick, then uh, you know, you're in a bit of a uh, pickle there unless you've got a spare stick. But I would uh, try to power it on with one, see whether that happens, swap the sticks around, and then try that. Try it on a different dim slot because one of your dim slots on the board might be failed and then you can return the board if the board's bad. If it's an old system, and uh, it's a more of an older system, you need to check your CMOS. Sometimes clearing the CMOS uh, can um, resolve this issue. CMOS or, or BIOS uh, settings uh, are, are corrupted and you need to clear it. There's a little jumper on the board normally where you can jump at this and it will clear uh, the CMOS and uh, basically help you clear it. What you can do is if it's an older system, which is very, very common for older PCs, is the battery is failing or flat or dead and it can cause problems. So replace your battery, and uh, you can get them on Amazon. They're not that expensive. They are CR2032, and you just replace them, okay? Uh, just try and get the Duracell ones. Don't get those cheap Chinese ones. Definitely get the uh, Duracell or something like that, and it should be good to go. Okay, so the next up, you're gonna have to test your power supply. That's very important, and uh, Older PCs um, with bad power supplies, that's quite uh, common. Uh, intermittent problems with power supplies, that's another tricky one to diagnose, especially if you don't have a spare power supply to swap it out, you won't know. You can stick in a multimeter to test all the connectors to see if you're getting good power on each of them. But the problem is uh, these intermittent issues are sometimes hard to di diagnose and the quickest way to test it is to swap it out. The problem is if you spent a bunch of money on all of your computer uh, components, the last thing you want to do is start buying uh, other parts to test. You're expecting it to work straight out of the gate and that's uh, the problem uh, for home users. You could take it to a PC repair shop. They normally charge a bench fee to test all your stuff and make sure it's working okay. Again, uh, they would uh, not have a power supply tester on site. They will probably just use one of them little cheap power supply testers which doesn't put it under any load, and it's very difficult uh, to troubleshoot it that way. So you're gonna need to test that. Whatever way you go about doing it um, is up to you, but you need to make sure that your power supply is known good, and then you can uh, move on to your next step. So once you've checked all those, and you've done everything like that, you're now determined whether what part has failed. You can then uh, send those parts back and get a replacement, RMAM. Okay, it's that simple. There's a little form online that you'll fill out. They will tell you to ship it back. Ship both of them back. Don't just ship one back. If it's a bad stick of RAM, they'll ask you to either send them back or they'll send a replacement or they will um, or give you your money back. But they normally want them both back. And sometimes they're not too fussy about the packaging. But sometimes if it's a motherboard and you're shipping the motherboard back, this is why it's very important for RMAs that you don't throw away that little plastic cover for the CPU cover. If you've got bin pins and all that sort of stuff, they are not going to replace that board, okay? So you need to make sure that you've got the uh, CPU cover, the plastic cover that goes over that and cover it all up as they won't re return it. I've had that issue before, uh, so keep all those bits. I know there's people online like to throw all the plastic boxes and all the covers around. Keep that sort of stuff. Don't do that silly stuff. Put it all into one place and keep it, and then you can always keep the boxes uh, until you find out whether the system runs well or not. This is why it's so important when you build a new system to do burning tests to make sure there is no problems with your hardware before you give it to uh, the person that you've built it for. Because again, you are giving them warranty. It's always good to test stuff and you wanna make sure the graphics card's working okay, the CPU, the thermals are okay, you've got enough cooling in here and everything else. Make sure everything's right before you ship that out to that person, okay? Hopefully these uh, tips will help you resolve your problems. Again, you will just have to go through all of these, uh, we'll find out whether it is just a cable issue or whether it is hardware. Once you find out what it is, you can then return that uh, item. But normally a lot of these problems, DOAs are uh, normally motherboard related um, when you start getting that no post and you can normally uh, quickly resolve that very quick as I showed you there. Anyway, that's going to be about it for this video. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Hope this video has been some use to you. If you need any more help or advice, you've got a Discord channel, you can pop on there and uh, ask for some advice on there and I'll be happy to help you out. And if I'm not there, there's a bunch of other technicians on there that will help you with your problems. I'll leave the link in the video description. I shall see you again for another video tomorrow. 
have a great weekend bye for now now if you haven't subscribed yet hit the red subscribe button and hit the bell notification button and click all to be notified when we upload new videos